how does rental income factor into retirement projections? I'm 34. Uh, thank you for uh, being very studious and yeah, thinking about retirement context. at 34. Yeah. And, and, bought, and bought a duplex before learning more about the right steps to take first. I also have my primary mortgage, about $100,000 left to pay on it. Would it be wiser to keep or sell the rental? That from Allie in Russellville. Well, Allie is quite the uh, adventuresome uh, financial person here, jumping out and buying a rental property at 34 years old. That's actually really pretty cool. But I think that uh, before we jump into this, Janet, we want to, to uh, have a disclaimer that we're not recommending for or against real estate as a particular investment, especially bricks and mortar real estate like right. Allie's talking about. Right. So r- rental income is really a, a different creature when it comes to retirement. And and I'll be transparent. My family has some rental property and, and I am a fan of it under the right circumstances. I am not a fan of it under different circumstances. And, and it all kind of depends on how you're wired. Um, I'll tell you what I've seen as an advisor over the years. Many times we have seen people come in with, you know, they'll come in to help have us help them handle decisions about their traditional IRA, their 401k, etc. But then in addition to that, they tell us about the rental property that they have, but most of them are managing it on their own. And they're like, I'm just going to keep it. I'm going to handle it. I, you know, so they are the electrician, the HVAC guy that they do everything. They're the plumber, you name it, whatever needs to be done gets done by the owner of the properties. And what I have always told them, and I usually get an eye roll at first, what I've always told them is right now that's what you're choosing to do, but there will come a day when you get tired of doing all that. And they're usually too young to hear me on that. And they're like, <laughs> no, I'm just going to keep it like like it's permanent. I'm just going to keep doing it. And then there comes a day when they come in and go, I'm so over this. I'm never p- fixing another sink leak for the rest of my life. What, what do I do? And so many times they wind up liquidating the properties right. just to get out of it. I, I will say there is another way. You can pay property managers to handle those things for you. And does it cost you something? Yes. But it doesn't cost you your time and your frustration. It costs you some dollars, but that's it. And so anyway, there are different approaches to it. And we don't know, Allie, we don't know in your situation enough about your whole picture of like, where are you on your steps towards financial independence? And are you at the right phase where this is in sequence as it should be? Or did we jump ahead and get rental property when maybe you've still got some consumer debt that needs to be taken care of? Um, maybe you're maybe you're on track for retirement on your own. Otherwise, maybe you're not. We're really not sure about the full picture, John. Well, and I think that there is, you know, obviously some value here. And, and we wouldn't say go sell this because we don't know if it's a good time to sell it in your market or whatever right. the case may be. But I think it's really important that you have a plan. And I think that's where Allie's kind of drifting in her question is, as she says that uh, she wants to take the right steps first. And so the right step first is to have a plan. You can include that rental property in your plan, but it's not the plan. Uh, that is a, a big issue with a lot of people is they go get a rental property or maybe even a portfolio of rental properties and they think they've got their plan. And right. as you uh, most accurately pointed out, sometimes that plan doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. so you've got to th- rethink that. So I think that there is really very much uh, a lot to think about, Ali, but we would say to you that the right first step is to have a plan and include that rental property in that plan. you got a long way to retirement. You're 34 years old and so you've got uh, a lot of maneuvering room here. I don't think that there's a mistake that you can make in this at this juncture because it, it certainly can be corrected over mm-hmm, time mm-hmm. if it was a bad move. But I think it is something that you definitely want to to think about. Now, Janet, let's also clarify that we use real estate investments yes. in our ready to retire process. So what we what we look at are things like non traded REITs um, because it gives an investor an opportunity to be a 
a real estate owner without having to fix the sink leak. Uh, but it gives them some diversification outside of the traditional stock and bond markets. And not that that's all that there is otherwise, but those are the things that most people think about most often. And because of bucketing, as we talked about earlier, you know, having buckets of money for different time periods, we really like the opportunity that we have with real estate to be kind of that intermediate bucket. So it's not as short term as your ultra conservative, but it's not as long term as things that look more like the traditional stock market, like the S&P 500. So it's a good diversifier that we like. And again, we're not even even on what we're doing on the non-traded REITs. We're not making that recommendation to anybody out there who's listening. But just so you know, that is something that we often utilize as a diversifier. Janet, I want to go back to the advice that we gave Ali about having a plan. I know that can sound just uh, rote from us, like it's just, oh, here they go again, talking about the plan. Look, there is nothing more important than you becoming financially independent. And you're not going to become financially independent in most cases without some strategy and some planning. Is it a bit of a hassle to do all that? Sure it is. You got to get all this stuff together and come sit down with a financial advisor and go through things. It's just the rest of your life we're talking about here. It's not anything really important. You know, it's, it, <laughs> it, it really is just you, you need to make the time to, to make that commitment. And having a plan gives you a shot at financial independence. Otherwise, you probably don't have a great shot. Uh, the planning process is something I think is very, very important, and it is so critical to, and, and look, financial independence is so important that you really do need to invest the time to go through whatever the, the you know, uglies are of getting all that done. It's really not all that ugly, but people tend to think, oh, I got all yeah. kinds of things to do and everything, and it really yeah. is not all that painful. I, I think... I think people respond to the thought of having a financial advisor meeting much like they respond to the thought of having to go to the dentist. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's, no, it is not it is not on the same list. We I'm go just to the same you. dentist. Yeah, and we got we great dentists. And he's, and he's fabulous. But yeah. I, as much as I love him, I still don't want to go see him yeah. when I'm in the dental chair. But, not any fun. But I anyway, the point is really, um, if you think about the purpose of this, you know, it is, again, to depend depending on what stage you're at personally, it is to help you discover, protect, and share true financial independence. And that is worth a little bit of discomfort along the way. But it's really not that, it, it, like you said, John, it is, it is actually a very positive experience. We wind up doing a lot of coaching. There is zero judgment in that room, oh, you yeah. know, because you come in on your path wherever you are. And if you're at stop one along the way on one to a hundred, you know, if there's a hundred different places we got to stop along the way to get you to retirement and you're at the very first one, that's okay. We're going to meet you right there. If you're at 99, we're going to meet you right there. That's okay. So no judgment at all. And it's very educational. So we're walking through like, this is where you are. Here's what the next step looks like. And here's what it looks like way farther into the future. And some of the steps that we need to start taking to get you to that point. So it is very intentional. <laughs> 